Good morning, Bucknutters. Welcome to the Bucknuts Morning 5 here on Friday, May 21st, 2021. I am Dave Biddle. I am very happy to be joined by Jonah Booker for his usual Friday visit. Jay Book, let's start with Heisman odds. Um, Last few years, we've been talking about uh, Justin Fields and the Heisman odds. So um, Master Teague is near the top 10 in Heisman odds. Tell me more, my friend. Yeah, the MGM released their college football odds, and Master Teague is leading the charge for Ohio State kids when it comes to who they view as a, a Heisman favorite. So basically, Vegas is telling everyone that they believe that Master Teague is the leader in the clubhouse when it comes to the running back position. You're looking at 28 to 1 odds there to put them right outside the top 10 in all of college football. I know Ohio State fans are giddy about the younger guys that are that are coming up behind him, believe that they have more potential. But Las Vegas, they're telling you that they think Master Teague is going to be the guy, the premier running back at Ohio State, uh, based off where they set those Heisman odds so far. So what do you think about that? I mean, let's let's move past the Heisman, because I'm sure everybody listening to the show really doesn't care about that right now, the Heisman odds, although... It is interesting to look at it. What do you make of Ohio State's running back situation as a whole? Like, not necessarily who takes the first snap of the first play of the season, but who's going to be the main guy this season or the main guys if they go with two guys? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm in two categories here, Dave, to be honest with you. I, I'm in the mind frame of Henderson and Mayan and maybe a healthy Crowley. It gives you more at the running back position. So my mind says, okay, you know, you could see a, a double headed monster with my meatball and Trevion Henderson there, especially if you, if you listen to the talk about from the coaches uh, after spring ball saying that Henderson's really going to get a shot to be the guy and Mark Petoni's calling him baby Saquon Barkley. And if you're getting that type of praise, or if you have that type of player in your program, the mind, my mind says, play him. I don't care how young he is. If he's that special and he's that gifted, have a one-two punch like USC had with Lindell White and Reggie Bush when it comes to Trevion Henderson and Meatball. But there's also the, the mind frame that Ohio State has a history of giving the veterans the benefit of the doubt and maybe playing them over some of the younger guys. And I, I just think that Master T is going to be a guy that starts off early getting the, the bulk of the carries. And if he if he just is adequate, I think he's still going to be in the mix getting carries. I, as much as Ohio State fans want to see, you know, the, the potential and the home run hitting ability of the younger guys, I just believe that Master T is not going to go away. And it kind of reminds me of, you know, when you're playing fantasy football and you have a handcuff on your roster and somebody else has to main back, you're kind of hoping that the other guy starts to see a little bit more carries so your value and your opinion of the guy will go up. Well, I just think that in this situation, Master Teague is going to get his touches. And Ohio State, they've shown that they're going to give the benefit of the doubt to veteran guys who played football for them before. I really can't remember a time where Ohio State had a veteran player who's had, you know, over 100 plus snaps on the field, just all of a sudden not see the, see the field any longer, meaning that they were just completely jumped. I'm sure there's someone can point one out, but history tells you that if you're if you have a veteran at Ohio State and he's played meaningful snaps in the past, he's going to get those lion's share of reps until he actually graduates. And that's just kind of how Ohio State goes about their business. Some will argue that that's, that shouldn't be the case, that the best players should play. Um, so I'm just kind of in the, in the boat of I wouldn't mind seeing those younger guys. I think they have a much more higher ceiling. But I also believe that 
as much as people want to speak it into existence, Master T will get his touches. Jonah, I've been spending way too much time watching the Reds lose baseball games because I missed when Mark Pantone compared Travion Henderson to Saquon Barkley. I love that. I love that. I mean, I shouldn't have missed that, but I love that. I love that. That tells me everything right there. I mean, talk more. Yeah, about it was that. on. It was. It was on a. Um, it was on a inst- on a Twitter, and they they commented back. They had a picture of Henderson or something like that, and Pantone replied back, "Baby Saquon." along those lines so if yes if, yeah so if Tony's is throwing that out there that tells me that Ohio State has something special in the making so to me if you got if you got a guy that that is a potential first round NFL running back play the guy get him his touches and see what he can do and we've seen it time and time again at Ohio State that's a position that you can make an impact right away as a true freshman. We've seen it time and time again. I mean, even Archie, you know, back when that wasn't even a thing, the first time freshman could even play, Archie made his splash as a true freshman. And then, you know, it snowballed from there when you look at Ohio State running backs, you know, uh, Robert Smith, Maurice Claret. I'm going to leave guys out, I'm sure. Beanie Wells, you know, J.K. Dobbins, many, many else. I mean, like, I'm, I'm sure I'm leaving guys out, but. That's a position that you can not only play right away, but make a big splash. So Absolutely. Uh, I'm expecting big things out of Travion. That's that's awesome that uh, Pantone compared him to Saquon Barkley. All right, last thing, man. I mean, JTT, where are you at on JTT? Because as I've said on the show, Jay Book, I'm not optimistic at all on this. Like, I'm not ruling that out. I know he likes Ohio State, but like, where are you at on this? Where do you think JTT is going to go, and what percentage chance do you give Ohio State of landing him? Yeah, um, you know, as we were, we've talked about him numerous times, Dave. And for a while, I was really bullish. You know, you listen to Brandon Huffman on twenty four seven, and he was pretty steadfast that you know Ohio State has held the lead for the longest period of time. But as we go through the process since the national championship. The way Nick Saban is operating out here, Dave, it has me shook (laughs) because Nick Saban is at this point is taking everyone and everybody from any anywhere in the country, from all teams. Um, And it's a point right now that if if you're talking about a guy that, you know, hasn't been on campus, but Ohio State still leads supposedly. You still have to give Ohio State more than the puncher's chance. Get them on campus, show them a good time, and I think Ohio State will have a legitimate shot. But there's something going on down there in Alabama to where if Nick Saban starts talking to these kids in their ear, he is tough to beat. And the indications are that uh, JTT is going to visit Alabama. So pulling him from – from the Crimson Tide, that's going to be a major, major haul. Um, not saying it's impossible. You know, if, if I had to say right now, it can go either way. And the fact that Nick Samet is taking everyone, anyone. My question is, how does Alabama have all of these scholarships to continue to take so many players? Because at this point, you know, they had a 25-plus recruiting class and they're taking transfers and adding JTT potentially to their class, you would think that, you know, they're way past the scholarship limit, but that's a, another conversation. I, I still have faith in Larry Johnson and Ryan Day. I still believe those guys uh, will recruit their tail off. They will show him a great time. And the thing that Ohio State still has going for them is they have some Washington guys that he's very familiar with on the roster right now. So they'll be able to also show him the red carpet. And I'm sure they've been in contact in, in his ear for the longest period of time. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed, but the first order of business needs to be get him on campus first. Great stuff, as always, from Jonah Booker. Thank you very much to Jay Book. Thank you very much to all the listeners out there. For tuning in to the show, we appreciate that very much. I hope everyone has a great day and a great weekend. Let's hear that Buckeye swag, best damn band in the land.